Hello and welcome to today's LOLE Sports Roundup where we cover the news of the last day in the uh, major regions of League of Legends Esports. Um, so, you're going to look at this board and say, wow, there's a lot more that I'm hearing about occurring and, and, and signings and things like that. Well, keep in mind that um, I only do what I see is official on Leakpedia. If it's not there, I'm not going to talk about it. Um, obviously, some teams are tweeting out things, and that would be considered official, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going through all that, all that stuff. So, um, this is what right now is official on Leakpedia. Uh, five teams, five different uh, orgs in definitely different places in their um, growth. So, Immortals, to start us off, yesterday, Tunnington became the GM. Tunnington has had one split as a person that is credited with a team's like success or lack thereof on Leakpedia, he was an assistant for TSM during spring when they would go five and 13. I don't know why they are the GM of Immortals, but um, if history says anything about Immortals, they really don't know what they're doing all the time. Golden Guardian, speaking of another org that sometimes makes questionable decisions or oftentimes who he has re rejoined them to play support he had a 2 kda 67 9 kp and played four champions in six games at worlds with 100 thieves um the bot lane did have to go against ruler lahens um gala and ming so that is a thing however they uh also split a game you know split against cfo which is a little unfortunate for us, you know. You were hoping that 100 Thieves would kind of show up in, uh, in a in a bigger way. Um, alongside Stixe, former teammate, you know, Golden Guardians. A lot of people have said, "Oh, Golden Guardians aren't doing what they said they're going to do." No, they are. In year one, they said they would get five veterans together and go forward with that, and then um, break it down from there. So, um, who he right now is at support. They also brought in Gory from the PCS. The last couple of years, he has gone from the LCK to the LPL and then the PCS in summer. He had played with FPX in spring and got the boot. So with um, PSG Talon in the playoffs, uh, he had a 3-3-3 KDA, 8-6-2 CS per minute, 75 KP, 27-5 kill share, 22-8 um, gold share played seven champions in 17 games i would not say he was the reason psg lost um a lot of weird situations in the playoffs for them good and bad um you know it, it, it is still unfortunate that psg did end up faltering um we've seen over the years psg being an organization you could rely on at worlds to be world class from a minor region definitely the best minor region team over the last few years now detonation focus me is making a claim but, um, you know, PSG had done really well. Gory, I mean, 862 CS per minute and 75 KP. He is not the reason PSG lost. He is ahead in his lane on average. He's in three out of every four kills. That's, you don't see that often. You know, usually you're giving one way or the other. And he is probably giving up farm. Maybe he gets up to nine or higher. Um, obviously, being from the LCK and LPL, you'd expect him to have a nine or higher in a minor region. Um, but with the 75 KP, he was probably roaming around the rift and trying to make things happen instead of farming all the time. So we'll see how he does with Golden Guardians. Now with some LCK news, uh, Gen G have replaced Lahens with Delight from Fred Aprian. Yes, this is a very questionable move. Delight is still only 20 years old, so we need to keep that in mind. Um, but Fred Aprian, a team that I am openly not a big fan of um, in the way that they play the game. It's hard to really get a vibe for what their players offer with the style of play in which they play in uh, modern day League of Legends. So 228 KDA, 70.3 KP, 13 champions in 42 games with Fred Aprian. Um, so the deal is why I don't like Bro. So um, they play really slow. Their coach, I think, is a former world champion from like 2014. And he still plays the game like it's 2014 in terms of what he wants his team to do and the way that they play macro. And it causes like a 35-minute, 40-minute game more often than not. And uh, it's really, really boring. Not a lot of aggression. So, you know, to, to see uh, expression in lane from these players I've, isn't very common. So, it's hard to really say what 
is Delight capable of when he was playing alongside Henna and Gammon and uh, Umpty wasn't making anything happen and the like. I will say that I do not believe he is a replacement for Lahens. Gen G's probably taking a step back and um, they probably acknowledge that. When you allow Ruler and Lahens to go and you already, I mean, pretty much said we're going to play Pays um, and not go get Teddy or Duck Dom or Ghost or, I mean, even, even the lesser 80 carries, right, in the market below Prince and um, Ruler. Um, you know, they're just kind of admitting that we're going to, you know, we, they want to do well because they have Chovy, they have Peanut and Doran still. But um, I think um, expectations in spring, at least, are curbed. Now, another direction, completely different than what Gen G did, is KT Rolster. So, um, KT Rolster, Rascal's out, and Vikla is going to be out. So, what did they do? Keen has now left the Freaks. He's been a Freak pretty much his whole career, if not his whole career. And now he is a member of KT Rolster. A 188 KDA, 812 CS per minute, 61 KP, 19.3 kill share, 22.4 gold share, 11 champions of 42 games with the Kwangdong Freaks last year. Keen, widely considered, and in my book as well, a top 5 to 10 top laner in the world when he's on. Will he return to form with KT? We'll see. The, I think with the Freaks, he did kind of lose his love of the game and really didn't try all that hard last year. Um, inting often, which is why the KDA is so bad. Um, he had moments where he flashed and showed what Keen's capable of. And also, I do believe that the meta really didn't fit him. Seeing him play Sejuani was like a slap in the face because I'm like, this guy should be carrying. They should not have Vikla on a carry. They should have him on a carry and have Vikla um, playing more of a facilitator role, especially as a rookie. Don't put the pressure on him. Put the pressure on Keen. Um, no, not Vikla. Sorry, Fate which I don't think Fate's as good as Vikla to begin with. So my apologies, mixing up KT and Kwang Dong here. Um, and in mid lane, speaking of Vikla, BDD is joining from Nongshim. BDD's been around the block, right? He's played with many different orgs so far and still only 23 years old, which surprised me. I thought he was probably 25 or so. So there is, um, this is what he is, um, which could be inconsistent. 327 KDA, 852 CS per minute, 694 KP, 241 gold share, 225, uh, 225 gold share, 241 kill share, sorry. 14 champions of 42 games, so a champion ocean. 14 champions of 42 games is a ton. Azir was 11 of those, so what? 13 and 31 is pretty incredible. Um, Nongshim, a lot to be desired. BDD and Ghost, I felt, left a lot on the table. Nongshim had a uh, musical chairs going at support with Effort, Snowflower, Peter, Blessing. Um, I feel like I'm missing somebody else. Like, honestly, it was a joke down there. Um, so, you know, it was BDD kind of just frustrated. It's similar to Keen. I'm looking at this, and I'm, we're going to get more into it, obviously, at the end of December, early January, when we preview and rank the teams going into spring. But, um... I think KT have a vibe going with them right now that this team is either going to be really good, like not like, um, well, they could be at that like fourth team tier or it's going to be very bad, um, one or the other. And it's going to be because of these two and whether they can return to form or not. Um, lastly, Dom Juan Kia, they've announced that Kana is now in top lane in place of Nuguri. Um, Kana was with Nongshim on the top side. The top side of the rift, in my opinion, for Red Forest was good. Kana and Dread. Um, 263 KDA, 822 CS per minute, 59.4 KP, 19.3 kill share, 22.5 gold share, 13 champions of 42 games. So you even compare that to Keen outright. Um, he had a much better split than Keen. And that was what the surprise was. Um, Kana, I felt like was okay and some t they had to have him carry and a lot of their wins i felt like he was a, a big reason why they would win him in dread so um you know how does that affect damwon kia i i think it's pretty lateral um from nuguri to kana in terms of level and impact on the team honestly i don't think damwon kia got any better with the moves that we have here um and they didn't get worse which was a possibility as well um, it is disappointing because I thought Rascal would be a good fit there, but Rascal still doesn't have a home. So, 
Um, Deft joined Dom Juan Kia as well. So Deft did not retire. I don't know how to feel about that. A lot of the emotional hype that came with Deft and his world's run had a lot to do with the fact that he was going to retire. So um, how do I feel about this? I don't really know. 441 KDA, 947 CS per minute, 591 KP, 23.9 kill share, 24 gold share, 9 champions in 21 games at Worlds. He was not the reason DRX won. He played a utility role, but that was the meta, right? Barrel did a lot of the work. Ashheimer bot lane, Barrel drawing that ban. Um, you saw Kingen do very well in the finals. Zeka doing very well for large portions of the tournament. Pioshik kind of just going with the flow and, um, you know, being really inconsistent. So Deft did his job. Um, and how this fits into Dom Juan Kia, like I said, I feel like he can do the job Duck Dom did, um, just with more consistency and um, more reliability because, you know, you just know that Deft is going to do it. Like, Deft is going to do the job. Um, is he going to, like, carry games? I don't think so. But Duck Dom really wasn't that player either, any, I mean, at all. So uh, that's the thing. I think putting Deft down with Kellen may help Kellen grow a bit because I thought Kellen kind of Kellen kind of stinks. So um, maybe Deft helps him uh, as far as that goes. And they also signed, um, well, picked up a head coach. They picked up Acorn. Acorn had been with KT and King Zone as well as kicking around for a while with other orgs. 69 and 75 as an assistant with LCK teams. Um, whether he was the head coach or assistant, I'm just going based off of, um, regular season results and what he's credited with on Leaguepedia. So 69 and 75 never has gone to worlds as part of an organization as, um, a coach, um, best finish they, that he did was winning Rift Rivals in 2019 with King Zone. So, um, and we know Rift Rivals is truly a Mickey Mouse tournament, but, um, Hasn't been to MSI, hasn't been to World, so that's really all he's got on his resume, um, which is which is kind of concerning, right? So, Danny, um, or, or sorry, Danny left a lot on the table as a coach. I felt like him going back and forth with, with the top lane with Nugri and Birdall was kind of silly. Um, I think his drafts were a little silly, but at the same time, uh, I would I do think he's better than Acorn without seeing Acorn run the show. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but that's it for this video. So uh, like the video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Share it if you enjoyed it that much. Comment down below with your opinions on this sort of stuff. Um, follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube member. $3 a month. Support to me. Get a badge in the comment section. $10 a month to get the badge. Plus NFL American football content. Like a video that I just put up before I filmed this where i went over this week's fantasy football ranking so if that interests you that's there thank you for watching and hope you come back for more content